Hey everyone, this is Callie. Welcome to Fawny Holiday Week. I'm excited to share a card with you featuring some Lawn Fawn products, old and new. So let's get started here. We're gonna create a shaker as well as doing some Copic coloring, ink blending, and stencil pasting. So there's a lot to cover. We're gonna work on our background first because I'm gonna use some stencil paste and I wanna have plenty of time for that to dry. So let's work on our background now. I have a Tim Holtz grip mat here and it's just gonna help grip my paper and hold it down in place while I stencil. I don't have to use anything to hold my paper down. And I don't have to use any fancy magnets. So it's a very helpful tool. And I'm using my ink stand here to hold my ink pad. I'm using Distress Oxides. I'm first filling my entire panel with milled lavender. It's just a light, light purple. And I'm gonna use this Victorian velvet to go all the way down, covering about three quarters. Um, maybe halfway, a little bit more than halfway, because I know that my tree border is gonna cover the bottom, so it's not really necessary to go all the way down. And then for the darkest color, I'm using Seedless Preserves. And then I'm just gonna blend that color about a third way down and then go back in with the Victorian Velvet and blend back and forth until I get a nice smooth blend. Now I have the snowflake background stencils here and I'm just using one and I've turned my stencil so that I can get the most out of my stencil in one pass. I'm just gonna apply a nice and even layer of this pearl stencil paste from Lawn Fawn using a Nouveau Media spatula. And once I'm happy with the coverage, I'll just peel up my stencil, revealing these beautiful stenciled snowflakes on the background panel that we just stenciled. So you'll see here when I lift it up, all of these pretty snowflakes are on my panel. It's nice and textured, and once it dries, there'll be a nice pearlescent sheen to it. So I'm just gonna set that aside to dry, and we'll stamp out our images and color those while it dries. I have the Over the Mountain borders on my left, and the Snowball Fight Set, which is so adorable, on my right. And I'll stamp images from both, and I won't use all of the images because I won't have space on my card, but it's better to have extra than to not have enough, so I went ahead and stamped plenty. Now there are images that I'm not gonna use, so I skipped over the coloring on those for the video just to save some time. On the snow images, I'm using B000, just adding a small highlight along the bottom left edges of all of the images and then blending it out into white with the B0000. Now the mice are fairly simple too. I'm using some warm grays. I'm starting with W4 and just adding some shading to the nooks and crannies of the bottom left hand corner of all of the images and then blending out with a medium W2 and then I'm going to blend a W0 to soften the previous two colors that I added. Now for the bellies and tummies, I'm gonna use a R30, and that's just gonna add a bit of interest to their tummies and add the cheeks as well. And as you can see on the noses, I did dot some W7 just for a dark nose. And then on the hats and stuff, I just used some light greens, blues, and purples. I did use some reds, but I ended up not using any of those red images, so I didn't share the coloring on that part. The coloring is very straightforward with these smaller areas to color, so two to three max if you even need a third marker. And then on the little hats and the pom-poms, I did a light gray. You don't wanna ever leave white white, so I always add a little bit of gray to apply a little bit of color and shading. So on the mountain border, I did the same as I did for the snow on the previous images. I did a light blue and just blended it into the white. And then the trees, I did G21, G24, and G28, and then coloring a little bit of brown on the tree trunks. Now after I colored everything, I went ahead and die cut it all off camera. I wanted to add some shimmer and shine. So I'm using some Prisma glitter and I'm using Glossy Accents as the adhesive. I slowed this down because I wanna show you where I'm applying my glue. So for the shading on the Copic coloring, I did bottom left, right? So for the shimmer and the shine, I'm going the opposite and going with the upper right hand corners and sides of all of the images. So I'm doing the same thing with the snowball cluster and then I'm gonna apply some glitter and then set that aside to dry. And I'll do that with all of the snowballs. And again, I don't use all of it, so I'm not gonna show the whole process for all of it. My panel is dry now, so I'm just gonna trim it off and get some clean corners and edges on them. So I cut about a 1 8 inch sliver off on all of the sides, and then I spritzed it with water, and now I'm splattering it with some white paint for some additional snow flurries. 
This paint's gonna dry super quick. I'm just gonna set that aside and clean up my work surface and then we can work on the next element which is this Magic Iris Snowflake. I'm gonna pull in my background elements just so I can eyeball how much space I need for my snowflake here. So now I'm cutting some pearlescent vellum and I'm gonna stamp my sentiment and emboss it in white over that pearlescent vellum. I'm using the Magic Holiday messages here and I'm gonna stamp Let It Snow in the center of this piece and that's gonna be the center of our shaker. So I'm gonna add some white embossing powder and then heat set that. And then I'll set that aside and we're gonna die cut a bunch of Magic Iris Snowflakes. I use some Pixie Dust Sparkle cardstock for the top and then some white off to the side so that I can stack for dimension and for my snowflake shaker. I'm using a pencil to outline the outer border of that ring around this snowflake to create my shaker window. So just a rough outline and then I'll fussy cut around that circle on the inside just slightly smaller so that it can still attach itself to the inner portion of this ring on my snowflake. I hope that makes sense. So once that's there and it fits perfectly, I'm gonna go ahead and stack the rest of my white die cut snowflakes to get lots of dimension and enough room for shaker elements underneath that let it snow sentiment. So I have three layers of heavy white cardstock as well as the pixie dust sparkle cardstock on the very top. So there's lots of room underneath that let it snow window for some shaker elements later. Now for the border, I'm just laying it out where I think it should sit, and then I'm gonna hold it in place, flip it over, and then mark the border again with a pencil so that I know where to cut in my trimmer. So again, I'm using those lines as a guide in my trimmer and trimming it off, just making sure that I still have the four inch wide border for the bottom of my card. I'm gonna use some liquid adhesive and go ahead and adhere that to my card background, and then we can adhere and work on our shaker. So because that pearlescent vellum is a little bit more opaque, I'm gonna use some white seed beads just so you can still see and hear the shaker bit elements. So I've added that to the center of my card, and then I'll add some liquid adhesive on the back of my snowflake, and then we can adhere that and seal all those seed beads in place. So you can't see a whole lot back there, but there is still some texture and we get some sound from those seed beads. So that's a nice play on the senses since you can hear it more than you can see it for this particular shaker. Now I'm laying out all of my images, making sure everything fits and seeing what I can and cannot use since I have extra images that I colored. And when I'm happy with my scene, I'll go ahead and adhere everything down. First, I'm using liquid adhesive to adhere the things that are further back in the scene. And then for the snow mouse and the mouse in front of the snow mouse, I'm gonna use some foam and some liquid adhesive to adhere them down so that they can match the height of our snowflake shaker without our images being glued down all wonky. So I've got some 3D foam squares on the back and bottom of my mouse and the snowflake, and then as well as the snowball. So it looks like it's being thrown at that other mouse there on the right. All right, so all of our images are adhered down. I just need to adhere this panel to a white card base, and then our card is done. I hope you enjoyed this fun winter shaker card for Fawny Holiday Week. If you are interested in any of the products I use, be sure to check out the coordinating blog post where everything will be linked for your convenience, as well as down below in the descriptions for this YouTube video. Thanks so much for stopping by, and have a great day, everyone. Bye. <music>